What is good, everybody? Today we're back with a brand new AEW Unmatched action figure review on the AEW Unmatched Series 10 Kenny Omega and Young Buck figures. Now, I'd say that all three of these are highly anticipated. I feel like it's been a while. We've been waiting on these figures for quite a while, man. But we're, today we're back with some Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. We do have our Elite here. And it looks to be pretty good. I think all three figures look very good. I did have to wait on my Kenny Omega a little longer. I remember my shipment. If you guys remember, I did tell you my shipment was a little messed up. So I did have to wait extra on these. But they're here today, man. And they are available at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there, of course. Greatly appreciate that, as always. We do have Nick Jackson, Kenny Omega, and Matt Jackson right here, and we are going to dive into the review, man. Been waiting on this Kenny Omega for quite a while, but I think all three figures are going to be very quality. I'm excited for the review. It should be a good one here, man. But if you want to see, we do have our front viewing window here. We'll take a look at Kenny Omega first. And he does have his black and blue gear there with the silver and white details, which looks very, very good. Very good saturation. Good head sculpt on there that we've seen before. Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega on the side, Kenny Omega on the side, Kenny Omega on the back, of course, and then you have the rest of the figures in the wave. Really excited for that Brandon Cutler, man. Gotta find that. Gotta find that at some point, but there's the rest of the wave. Very good wave. Overall, a very quality wave, and we already reviewed the Edge or Adam Copeland figure. If you guys missed that review, definitely check that out, but there is our Kenny Omega, and then we also have a look at our Young Bucks, which I think these could potentially be the best Young Bucks. You know, we do have those Walmart exclusive ones and stuff, which we'll, you know, we'll take a look at them. We'll take a look at everything we have going on. They're very similar to those. They're kind of a repeat paint with you know some different head sculpt details going on but we'll see about all that stuff man but that is pretty much your packaging standard unrivaled unmatched packaging the unmatched is in the silver the unrivaled is in the gold but at least all of them do look really really good i, I appreciate the AEW packaging i think these figures are great really uh, dang that would have been nice to see the jackets in there but not not bad not bad at all man but what we're gonna do is crack all three guys out of the packaging find out what they're all about and see if these unmatched series 10 figures of these guys are are better than the rest of the versions we've gotten of these guys, but we won't know unless we crack them out. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's uh, bring it right here. And... So here we have the Unmatched 10 Young Bucks and Kenny Omega out of the packaging, and I'm liking all the different things that I'm seeing here. You guys know that the Kenny Omega figures are some of my favorites from AEW, so every time they come out with a new Kenny Omega, always throw for it, not only because I'm a Kenny Omega fan, but because they usually nail it. They usually nail the Kenny Omegas, and we'll get into this one to find out if it's on par with the rest of our Kenny Omegas that we've seen from Jazzwares and AEW. But then these Young Bucks, are these Young Bucks the best Young Bucks we've seen so far? We will discuss that here today. We're going to find out. We're going to dive into all the details. Take a look at the accessories and of course break down all of it here for you but what we're going to do is take a closer look at all of the Young Bucks accessories together we'll cover the Young Bucks together since they are a tag team and essentially pretty much the same exact figure except for a different head sculpt then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Kenny Omega's accessories and the details of the Kenny Omega figure so for the Young Bucks accessories man you pretty much get the exact same things with each buck so they're both going to come with a world tag championship you guys can see it's the AEW logo I don't know why the damn I don't know why the exposure and the lighting so bad but you can see the AEW tag title. Now one thing I'm noticing about this is it does seem that the gold or something like that is different on this title compared to other world tag titles we've gotten in the past. I don't know what it is. I think the gold's a bit more possibly realistic. It looks a bit darker and a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more realistic between the other world tag titles we've gotten but I could be wrong on that but they look pretty good essentially. Never going to complain about championship belts. I always appreciate championship belts in the collection but these look a little bit different to me. I don't know what it is. And then you are going to get some interchangeable hands with the Nick Jackson. You do get interchangeable fists that we've seen before. Got a little schmuck on the back of that hand right there. And then you also get the grappling hand with no wrist tape whatsoever for Nick Jackson. And then for Matt Jackson, you're essentially getting the exact same hand, except the right hand has the black hand tape, no black peg though. And then, yeah, it's the exact same sculpt as Nick's. And then it just has some paint on it for the tape. And the same goes for his grappling hands. The right hand has black tape on it with a no black peg. And then the left hand is blank. So essentially getting the exact same accessories with these young bucks. So getting into Nick Jackson first, and then we will dive into Matt Jackson right afterwards. Here is the head sculpt. He's got the pissed off gritting head sculpt, which we have come to know. I'm pretty sure we've seen this head sculpt before. It does look like they've added a beard or something here. You have the headband. I don't think this is the, this isn't the exact head sculpt we got on the Walmart exclusive because it did have the braids going down on the face or whatever that was there. Not the, you know, the beads hanging down and then we had to cut those off or whatever. But I think this is a new head sculpt except it just has a lot of likeness from other head sculpts is what it looks like. You have that flat you know, Nick Jackson hair going on. The headband does look good. You can see the beads 
are the same similar thing going on right there. A little bit of black missing paint there, but I do like the pattern and the hair is that sort of orangish brownish blonde going on. It's kind of a, I don't even know, it's like a lightish orange color, but it does have that kind of blonde or brown feel to it. But the lightness isn't bad. It's just kind of a, not the best head sculpt of all time, but I don't despise it in any way. And then going down to the torso, you are going to see, uh, you know, you are going to see a bit of a difference here in skin tone. The, the lower part of his stomach, which does have a lot of markings on it. Look at that right there, man. Look at all the, I don't even know what the hell that, you see this? It's like the stomach, it has like these tears or something in it, but you are getting a big differentiation between the upper torso and the lower torso, but on the Mad Jackson, it's not as bad, so I'm not sure if I just got a bad nick or something, but maybe I could replace the upper torso or replace the torso on this figure, you know, pick up a second mat to put on there or something like that. May have to do that, but he does have the black wrist tape in there, not a, you know, not the, not the biggest deal because it's something that I can fix relatively easily, even though we shouldn't have to deal with that. It just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't bother me as much because it's so easily changeable. You know, when you get into other things like, you know, if Mattel were to make something like this and the torso had this big, you know, this big of a mess up, it would bother me more because it's it's harder to change, I guess, is the way I look at it. So having this ability to change torsos really does, you know, kind of filter that out for me, at least personally, even though I know a lot of people don't agree with that exactly. But going down into the pants, I do believe this is the exact same crotch and uh, maybe not the crotch. The crotch may be new compared to the Walmart exclusive, but these legs are the Walmart exclusive buck legs with the pockets on the side, but I love all the sunset detail and the paint apps that have. The patterns and the paint apps going on on these is incredible though. I think they look really detailed and nice. I like the airbrushing on the front and the sunset vibes that they have going. I like all of the, you know, just the really cool pants, man. And these feel so much more solid than the other Young Bucks that we've seen in the past. He does have the shoes in here in orange and black and white. And I'm pretty sure, I'm sure they were wearing Dunks or Jays or something. I Again, I'd have to go back and look at the match that they wore to really tell you exactly what they were. But we do have the We Are All Elite on the back and it's got the Elite logos on the back and then on the other side it does have the Young Bucks. Very nice detail right there. I think that just is so damn nice. But may have to, I, I, I may have to, you know, paint a swoosh on there or something just to get it in there. Even have an Elite logo over here too. Like very, and look at that, super kick party over here too. So they really got all the details in there. That's kind of crazy. I didn't even notice that. And before we get into some like Nick Jackson comparisons, we will get into Matt Jackson. So we'll dive into Matt Jackson really quick and then we'll do their comparisons and everything like that. But I will go over the articulation real quick. The kick forward is not the best of all time, but you do get the splits because they're on ball joints. Double jointed knee, which is nice. You do get shin cut and you don't get ankle cut. So it's very similar to the Zelina Vega we saw the other day, but at least you do get ankle rocker. And I really, it doesn't bother me as much because the figure is just so much more firm. You know, he's not falling over. He stands firm on his feet, which is a really big deal for me personally. I'm going to move this back a little bit here, but you know, all of this right here is the same. Arms can go above 90. You get the full rotation. You get bicep swivel, double jointed arm, and then you have a really good ab crunch because it's an AEW figure there. But I'd really like to see a shoe swivel and a shin cut so you can get the double articulation there. But at least the shoes stand firm here. I'm not getting a bunch of huge deals with this, but the figure feels really solid and I feel like I could pose him around and I don't feel like the figure is going to fall. Like, look at that. He could just stand firm. He's not going to, you know, fall flat on his face like other bucks of the past. You know, with the, the ones that have tassels and stuff like that usually fall flat on their face. And then getting into Matt Jackson here, you guys will see. Look at the beard right there. We have a brand new head sculpt going on. He's got the man bun, but then he also has the hair hanging down. And I just feel like a lot of the Young Bucks head sculpts, they're either very hit or very miss. And I like the likeness on this head sculpt. He's kind of making like a kiss face. You know, they've had a lot of different looks over the past few years, but I don't hate this head sculpt. I think it looks pretty good. The bandana looks very good as well. No black missing paint that I'm seeing besides maybe a little on the ear maybe, but the likeness is very good. But besides that, look at the torsos right here, man. Look at the torso here. You can see that it's a little bit of a difference, but it's not quite the difference that the Nick Jackson is. And even in person, the lower torso is not near as dark as Nick Jackson's in real life. And I don't know why he looks like he, he looks like he survived some sort of shanking. He looks like he got shanked in the stomach like 62 times in prison. And then, you know, it just kind of healed. He kind of has like a Sabu torso going on right there. But the stomach looks pretty good on Matt Jackson. So there's your differences between the two. But in terms of the crotch piece and everything else, besides the hand tape and the head sculpt, I'm pretty sure these guys are the exact same figure all the way down. I mean, everything about these guys is essentially the same. The logos, the kicks, everything, they look identical. I mean, you're even getting some patterns down here. Look at the honeycomb pattern or whatever that is down there. You know, we've kind of seen this screen printed technology on other figures as well, but these bucks are pretty damn good. I think, you know, outside of the head sculpts though, I mean, these guys look pretty much the exact same. Now, I think the biggest comparison that you can make with these guys is going to be the Walmart bucks. And having these up next to each other, you know, I know that the Walmart bucks do have the jackets on, but I think that the attire, I do like the Walmart attire better, but you're not getting jackets on there. You have them in regular wrestling gear. 
and I did head swap these. So the original head sculpts have those tassels going down in front of the face. So I switched them out for the Unrivaled Series 3 Bucks, and I think these are, I really think these are the best head sculpts you'll see from the Young Bucks which is the Unrivaled 1B head sculpt for Matt. We've had some decent ones. I think that the Jazzwares Vault exclusive 2-pack has decent head sculpts. You have the GameStop exclusive Bucks from the Street Fighter Gears. I think those head sculpts are okay as well. It just kind of depends on what vibe you're going for and what Bucks you want exactly. But looking at the crotches, okay, so the crotches are different. The crotches are different over here, but, you know, these have the, the belt buckle and everything, and these don't. These have the chain, so there's the difference there. But I don't know, man. I think at the end of the day, I would go with the Walmart Bucks, but I guess it it just depends. These kind of look like baby face bucks, and these kind of look like heels. At least like just optics, you know? Just kind of depends on your vibe and what you want there. But I like all the versions. They look really good, and I didn't really want to compare anything else because these are the exact same molds in terms of the legs. You're getting the shoes, you're getting the pant jogger molds, you know, the cargo style pants. I mean, I'll bring in the GameStop exclusive so you can kind of see there, but I mean, these are much different. I mean, these have the classic tassels and everything going on, and these are kind of a special one-off bucks compared to, you know, maybe some just regular traditional gear but that is it for your young buck comparisons but what we will do is we will put the mdt tag team championships on here just to see what those look like and i don't know man the mdt tag team championships kind of fit the vibe of these guys right like when they when they dress up all crazy and everything i think they just look really good i think it'd be cool to have a gear like this that's inspired by the championships so i mean you're kind of getting that a little bit with these you're having zebra print you're having that rainbow but uh, a little bit closer to the ta to the titles imagine they had joggers or cargo pants that look just like the titles that would be kind of nutty but that is it for your young buck figure comparisons and i just wanted to see what these look like and then for kenny omega's accessories man not a lot going on you get the off hand and the shooter hand here which is a nice sculpt and i love that they include this i just wish we had a bit more going on here man you get interchangeable hands here and then you get interchangeable mic holding or weapon wielding grappling hands and that is it no shirts no titles no anything man so that's kind of bummy i wish that we could have gotten something i don't really care what we could have got i mean hell even a steel chair would have been nice just to see instead of just interchangeable hands. So a bit boring on the accessories, but you know, I guess it's better than just simply nothing at all. And then getting into Kitty Omega, starting out at the head sculpt, this is a head sculpt we've seen before, and it's pretty much the exact same head sculpt we got on his Supreme Comic Con exclusive is exactly what it looks like. The expression, everything, and we have seen it before on other figures as well, but the most recent Kenny Omega that we reviewed, the Comic Con exclusive Supreme, this is essentially what that figure is. I mean, that's pretty much, or at least the head sculpt. In terms of head sculpt, that's what this is, but it's a good head sculpt. I like how pissed off he is. I'm never going to complain about this head sculpt. I think it looks really good. And then going down to the torso, you have the same Kenny Omega torso that we've seen before in the past. Nothing changes there. He has the pins in the arms, the white wrist tape. Really, what is different on this figure is going to be the tights, which is his attire from his match with Brian Danielson. You have the little tassel in the front right there, which looks good. And then you have a really saturated blue and a very nice white and black that goes all the way around. Reminds me of the Carolina Panthers or something. It's kind of the colors and vibe it's going with here. Looks very clean, though. Very clean. I wish that it had some shimmer in it or some sort of iridescent. I'm pretty sure this gear had, like, these jewels and diamonds or these patterns had some reflective material on it. You probably could hit it with some shiny Mod Podge or, you know, get some sort of paint on there and put over it. And it would give it a reflective look and it would probably look a lot better. But... I don't know, maybe we'll, we may experiment with that, but the Kenny Omega looks really good. You kind of have the, the K right there doing the V trigger going on right there. You have more patterns going on right there, and then down to the kick pads. It's all the same sculpts that we've seen from Kenny Omega, but his figures are so good that it really doesn't bother me. Now, one thing about Kenny Omega figures is they're going to feel immaculate in hand. He has a really good kick forward right there, and I mean, he can even like flamingo his leg a little bit. That's how good the, the articulation is right there, but head can look all the way down. Cannot look up because of the hair on the back there, but yeah, the shoulders that go up. Got the full 360 bicep swivel. Double jointed arms, of course, as you guys know. You have the upper thigh cut. You get the double jointed knee. You get the kick pad rotation, and you get the ankle rotation, and it goes down and up, and it has an ankle pivot, of course. It's just a, man, the Kenny Omega figures are just such a good representation of the character, and... I'd say up next to Darby Allen, you can't mess with the Kenny Omega figures, man. They're just so good. It's it's impossible. You can't really challenge them. That's how good they are, really. But let's get into some Kenny Omega gear comparisons. So for your Kenny Omega comparisons, here is all of the different iterations of Kenny we have. Now, the only attire I think I'm missing right here is the second version of the Supreme. And then the jeans and just the different promo gear Kenny. So if you count the Unmatched Series 5 that has the rainbow jacket or the heel Kenny Omega and the jeans. And then you have the Supreme that does have the jeans as well and then you have the 
ringside exclusive green and black Kenny Omega. But one thing I'm also noticing is the skin tone on this torso is much different than the rest. But maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why this head sculpt looks so good is because the skin tone's better and it looks more accurate. It's definitely different and looks much better, I will say that, compared to the rest of the Kenny Omegas. You're not getting as much of a gray skin tone. It looks a lot more of a natural skin tone. But from left to right, you have the Unrivaled Series 4. You have the Walmart Exclusive Supreme. You have the Supreme Series 2. You have the Comic-Con Exclusive Supreme from 2024. You have the Unmatched Series 1, and you have the Unrivaled Series 1 with the pale skin tone. Now, I know we have the GameStop exclusive. We have these other figures, but essentially, this is what it comes down to. You know, I know we have the blood and guts. We have a lot of Kenny Omegas, but in terms of just wrestling gear, outside of that ringside collectibles AEW ring one in the green, which is just a redo of this figure over here with the pale skin tone, this is all of your Kenny Omegas, and they look pretty John Brown good. I love Kenny Omega. I, you know, I'd say in terms of unmatched and unrivaled, I think that this one is just as good as these other ones, except the skin tone is better. So that may be something that you you want to upgrade there but in terms of gear I definitely don't like I don't really I don't know if I like this gear as much as the other gears I really do like the rest of his gears I like this one better than this one I just was never a fan of this particular gear but the rest are, are pretty damn good and I do want to put the elite title on here because I think this elite title elite title will probably look pretty daggum good with this gear because the black and blue does look very nice up next to each other so there's that right there and you know maybe when I get an opportunity man can defend a championship but see how much more natural the title looks with the skin tone man just look at the skin tones. It's it's definitely a lot better natural skin tone than what you're getting on the rest. That's actually wild, though. Anyway, that does it for your Kenny Omega figure comparison. But I think at the end of the day, that is going to wrap up the AEW Unmatched Series 10 Young Bucks and Kenny Omega for me, man. At the end of the day, I really enjoy all of these. Uh, I mean, really, the only gripes that I have with these figures are the maybe the two-tone looking skin tones of the Nick Jackson in particular. I'm not really getting as much of that on the Matt Jackson, but on the Nick Jackson, it's definitely it's a little bit noticeable. Maybe I can get another Matt Jackson and switch to Torso because I do believe these guys are, I mean, essentially the exact same figure except for the head sculpts. I mean, yeah, maybe the the right hand may have some black tape on it, but I could easily switch that out or do something else. But I really love the gear here. I think that's kind of what you're getting the most out of here. But these are, I mean, pretty much just a repaint of the Walmart bucks with regular torsos. But I like them a lot. I love the gear on all three characters. I know they're a bit outdated now, but I still think they're great. I love how firm they are. The Kenny Omega by itself is just so good because the Kenny Omega figures from Jazzwares are just too good. They're way too good, man. I mean, they're some of my favorite wrestling figures ever. They feel so clean. They pose around so well. They look so nice, and they're Kenny Omega. I mean, what do you what do you want to see, man? They're they're very good. They're very well executed, much like Darby Allen, like we like to talk about on the channel. And then the Young Bucks are very good as well. They really are. I think these might be the best Bucks. I think they really are. I really like the attires. The attires are bright and nice. I like how firm they stand. They don't fall over like a lot of other Buck figures. I would compare them very similarly to the Walmart exclusive Bucks, which I think to this point, I mean, even then they, they might be. I mean, it's it's either it's make your pick really because the Unrivaled Series Three were very very good, but they're a bit outdated now. I think these are a lot more firm. They stand a lot better, and I think overall, figure-wise, they are a bit better than those figures, but I would say leave it up to the Walmart exclusive bucks or these bucks to be the best ones or the ones that you want to pick up, but I guess you just have to kind of make your pick on what gear you like better. I mean, that's kind of essentially what it comes down to, but I really like how different it is. I like the sunrise sort of style going on. I like all the patterns and imagery. The shoe details are very sweet, and you throw the Kenny Omega on top of it, and I think they are all really, really strong figures. Very fun figures overall, and I'm glad to have another pair of bucks here, another you know, Kenny Omega to add to the collection. As you guys know, big fans of both and all together. So I think these are really good, man. But if you guys want to grab these, you can do so over at ringsidecollectibles.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. And a huge shout out to Ringside for being the greatest wrestling action figure retailer in the world. So, but at the end of the day, I think that if you, I mean, do you absolutely need any of these figures? I don't know. But in terms of how good they are and how, you know, to this point, I think that these are probably the best representations, then yes. You know, I mean, if you have the Supreme Kenny and you want this gear for your Supreme Kenny, you know, you could pick this up and pop your Supreme Torso into these tights and you can make a Supreme Kenny in this exact gear. I think the head sculpt looks good, even if it is just a repeat head sculpt. The likeness is very, very good. And really, I think the paint apps on this one may be better. I think the likeness may be a touch better just because of the paint application or the, you know, just the different details or true effects applied. But nonetheless, man, that is pretty much going to wrap the video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know your thoughts on all these things down in the comment section below. But nonetheless, I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Huge shout out to our Patreon members. Thank you guys so very much for your support as always. Thank you guys so very much for everything that you guys do for me. But I'm getting the hell out, man. I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys have a blessed day. I'll see you next time. Peace out.